Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are in the data center again 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 so uh, last week I did a video where I tried to run VMware 7.0 on this awesome IBM slash Lenovo X3650 model 2 and it failed we put two new good CPUs in there uh, that worked really well we didn't get the memory to run at the well, I was trying to get it up to 1,333 megahertz and I couldn't and I couldn't figure it out and someone wrote in the comments that that CPU did not have an SFB I think that stands for front side bus of more than 1,066 megahertz which explains why that didn't work for me so yeah, thank you very much for all those comments uh, I did two videos, I did the memory in the first video but as I did the videos just um, next to each other, I didn't get all of your awesome feedback, which is always in the comments below. There's a lot of smart people down there. And also on the second video where we messed around with ESXi 7.0, there were some awesome comments on how to trick it and how to ninja hack it. So we're gonna try that today. And of course, I post videos on Tuesday and on Friday so my good buddy Uncle Joe beat me to it and handed me my own ass on a silver platter over at Uncle Joe's Playhouse and he beat me to it because my videos are scheduled and he just flew it out there the solution was in my comments he stole that and made a video and good for him to go over there and see him do exactly the same thing I'll make sure to leave a link in the description but I'm gonna do it as well because I wanna see if it works on this awesome IBM X3650 M2. He did it on an M3. Should be the same thing, but I wanna see it working too. Other than that, this magical cable came in. Um, I have this tiny little monitor here, this one, and it's kind of cool and I think it's, well, but it's, it only does um, HDMI. So I really wanted to try and use this little monitor on my old servers and they only have VGA so I bought a VGA to HDMI connector or converter or yeah you know what I mean and uh, we're gonna try and plug that in but let's try the ESXi first and see if, if that works I still have the multi boot um, we're gonna pop that in so right here and power on oh lights blinking um, this server doesn't have any hard drives it has the NVMe drives inside, so um, we're gonna be uh, installing on that. And it's gonna do all kind of checks, and it's gonna, uh, I'm gonna press F12 for selecting boot options. There, boot options. We're gonna select USB storage, right there. And here we get the boot options, uh, the ISO files that I put on this multi-boot. Uh, by the way, this uh, was also suggested in the comments. Uh, below of one of my videos and uh, yeah, I, I, I try out some of the good stuff that you suggest me because well many of you are very smart on specific areas none of us can know everything but together we uh, we get the problem solved so we're gonna select ESXi 7.0 there is something that we need to do when that boots up I have printed that out so even a blind grandma can read this on the backside with her walking cane um, so what happens is when this boots and it starts to load ESXi we need to uh, press shift O and that is for adding additional boot options and the boot options that we want to add is this allow legacy CPU equals true so we're gonna see if we can handle that I am gonna have trouble finding that letter the equals I'm sure but let's give it a go enter here ready on the control O there it says it down here actually and we get a prompt uh, you end up with this and then you space and then we add our line and it is case sensitive there and it continues and it sees our nice new CPUs, the X5679, 3.2 GHz, 
24 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, with the lower RAM frequency, I could actually double the RAM without any penalty. Yeah, that would be an option for this CPU. It can run full speed, but it can do double the amount of RAM without a penalty, which will be the same penalty as the X5675. So at that point, this would be better. So continuing the installation, enter, prove F11, and we're gonna install it on the same King, King DN, I think it's called the M.2 SSD in there. So continue on that. It's gonna find an old installation, probably. Ask if you wanna update that. That's the 6.7 uh, 6 that I put on there and in the last video. So, let's see, upgrade. Nah, let's just, I didn't do anything. Let's enter. Keyboard, we're gonna go for Danish. And I'm gonna give it a password and continue. There we are, continue. It's gonna be scanning the hardware and it's telling us about the CPU. Without that extra text here, the magical allow legacy CPU. It did not allow us to continue, but now there is an enter for continue. So enter to continue and F11 to wipe the drives. So a little bit of a disclaimer here. This is of course not supported by VMware. And I would also um, not encourage this to be used in any kind of a production environment, professional production environment. It's fine for your home lab, but um, yeah. And you know, if you tell your boss that you can run this new ESXi 7.0 on his old hardware at work, and it won't cost him anything, well, you know he's gonna say that you can do that, and you know who he's gonna point at if this doesn't work, and it breaks, and it doesn't perform as expected, or if there's anything wrong. Well, it's still gonna be your problem, and it's, it's not great, so, no production environments and don't tell the boss because he's gonna expect you to fix it nevertheless he don't get this okay now it's uh, it's done it wants me to remove the boot media okie dokie I have been missing with uh, putting this screen up in the meanwhile the monitor needs power and the VGA cable here needs power so I need I kind of need both USB ports over here so now I might be able to, to do this I am very curious to see if this works. Field monitor. No signal. Okay, let's drop this in and out. Oh! Okay, it works. It doesn't look great. You get a very purple text here, but you get the same text. I would say that it works, but colors are bad. Let's try that again. Well, they're still purple. Let's put it up here. Let's see if it gets better. It might not be the most beautiful solution with all those cables. I was hoping for just a cable that would go, and uh, I'm a bit curious to what the graphics will look like. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Well, it still looks kind of cool to have that little monitor, even though it's a blotchy cable mess. <laughs> so, uh, new colors for VMware. Okay, awesome. VMware 7.0 is running on here. Uh, let's go to the computer and see if it's happy in there. Okay, we are at the computer, ready to press login. And uh, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, 7.00 working there. Do you wanna, well, we don't wanna, uh, that's the, the VMware make this product better program. We're not gonna join because, well, we're probably not gonna be using this machine for anything, but it works very well. I uh, don't think we have any data stores here. It sees, oh, there is one data store. That's because, oh, we are looking at devices. There is just the data store that is left over from from the space that we didn't use on that M.2 SSD. And then there is, that's devices. There is our two NVMe drives up here that we could add. Okay, I'm a bit confused here. King DN, 223 gigabytes. 
100, 100. I guess VMware is using it for something. So, um, okay. It's not as if this is any, it's not problematic to do this, but I have another idea that I want to test out. Do, um, does any of you remember this guy? This is the tiny Lenovo server that I made for my 1000 video. And it has a USB stick and we installed ESXi 7.0 on that. I would expect that if we try and boot on that, it will also work. So I want to try that. So I've removed the little monitor again. I need the USB ports over here. So we're going to pop that in and then we are going to ask it to, um, to reboot. Restart, restart, yeah. F11, and to do that you have to press F12, enter the password, and then you can boot ESXi from the console here. It's a, it's a good security feature that you need to do that. And then of course when it boots, we need to press F12 to go into the boot devices. I'll do that. I'm a bit confused, it, uh, it's lighting up orange over here. I don't know what it's up to. Complaints about BASD. Yeah, that's usually hard drives. It is lighting up on the hard drives, but well, as there is no hard drives in it, it shouldn't really be any faults. Yeah. Never mind. It's just being picky. 12, and we'll select the USB thingy. There. Go, go, gadget. Legacy USB. It's looking at the other boot options, and it's gonna it's gonna bug me probably about the hard drives again not being there. No virtual drive found. Oh no. And it boots ESXi. Does it work? We'll know later. Recovery. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit hard to know which one is actually loading. If it's using the USB or if it's using the one that we just installed on the hard drive slash M.2 SSD. <laughs> okay, that booted as well. No issues whatsoever. It uh, took another IP number. Just taking a USB stick and installing ESXi 7.0 on a machine that is actually compatible and then just moving that USB stick over to a machine um, where it's not compatible. That will work as well. There might be some issues with network cards and drivers and stuff, but I think as long as the machines are very close, I would also expect that I would be able to take the awesome Lenovo slash IBM X3650 model 4, which is okay for ESXi 7.0, and uh, installing it on that and then moving the USB key over to an older server, also a Lenovo slash IBM server, I guess that would work as well. Okay, I connected the screen to the Model 4 over here instead. And on that one, the colors are correct on the little monitor. So it does actually work. Um, uh, let's try and put it back into the model. On that one, the colors are all bad. But on the Model 4... Okay, now it has gone into screen saving mode. And I don't have a keyboard on it. but. Yeah, the colors was okay on that one. So maybe I wasn't really ripped off. Anyway, um, yeah, this trick, that works great. Also just taking a USB key where ESXi 7.0 is already installed on a, on a system that is closely configured to. Like I was surprised that I could take this tiny Lenovo and do that and it just booted and no issues and no problems whatsoever. So yeah. And thank you very much to Anki Joe for his shout out and to do this video on this project that I did not get up and running in the last video. But I hope you enjoyed this little ninja trick and maybe you have a server at home that you want to try ESXi 7.0 on and maybe this will just solve your problem. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.